today, I am, of course, a Nabuk, and I'm joined by Austin. How are you doing, Austin? Dude, I'm doing pretty fantastic. I You were explaining the rule set to me a little bit earlier because yes. a lot of people kind of don't understand it at first glance, including myself. I was yeah. like lost as heck. But once I was able to like jump into it and you explained it a little bit more, I understand that this is actually a pretty cool system. So viewers at home, if you guys are lost, don't worry about it. It'll all make sense once you watch like one set. It's basically the most important thing is keeping stocks. Like stocks matter so much. Very similar to like a normal crew battle. Yeah, no, 100%. And that's the thing, right? Is it is essentially just a l elongated crew battle with a little bit more added on so that every single player does. Mm. Yeah, so this is it's going to be, you know, this is the preseason as well. So we're going to see what's going to what's going to be promising here tonight. Like you said, uh, Canisius and RIT are going to be the schools that are playing the most tonight. They got two different rounds. So they're once again, they're in for the long haul. I'm excited what's gonna happen today because I I, I want to see some comebacks or some some hype sets to come because like I feel like if there's a steamroll like this would not be uh, as exciting but apparently a lot of the sets have been going pretty close. Yeah, no, I mean we did see I believe we were out of the whole only one set that was or a bit of a stomp. It, but overall we back to see and I'm just excited. This format again when we played it like you said it was a bit odd right it was a bit confusing but i think as people get it, it got more interesting because we started to understand and see the intricacy yeah uh it, like i said it also gives an excuse to let every player play i know there have been plenty of crew battles that i've seen in my my time anyways where you know yeah, five players versus five players and a team could win without even sending someone could win without even playing the game so it's a pretty new system where it's like you literally need to use every single person on your team. Yeah. And, and also, uh, yeah. And the other thing about it is that prior to the match, the players don't, right? They're not the players. They're locking in their roster and their order before the game. So they kind of need to have a look at the prior history and try and figure that out, right? So that mind game as well. Because you might try and bait somebody and you might have your captain in last because the captain would be. Player, or you might have them up front and try and get a massive paralyzer opposition. Suddenly they've got eight points. Yeah, honestly, I, I feel like it's going to come down to luck a lot of the times too, because there's not really like a, a quote anchor unquote in this. You know, you're just kind of sending in your players at a in a random position, and yeah. you're just like hoping for the best. And or you know, if you've played the school before in the past, you maybe you'll you'll you can kind of like guess do some mind games on where they're going to put their players like you were just saying i'm actually reminded of like normal sports when it comes to this um uh back in like college um they had a uh, what was it, it they, there were tennis teams where you, tennis is a, normally a 1v1 sport or 2v2 but most of the time 1v1 and you'd had a school would have like six players and they would they were required to put their best player as number one and their worst player as number six so that like the best player would play against the best and then some stuff like that. Obviously schools didn't do that. They would, they would obviously mess yeah. around with it yeah, and yeah. try to like put in, in, in play a little bit more mind gaming. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's exactly what I see these schools doing up, man. And I was, I was surprised to see RIT uh, coming into the school. Like I actually, uh, that, that's like super close to whereabouts I am up North, but Hey, let's jump right into it. So we got uh, Pikachu versus Ganon. I believe this is a uh, Canisius on the player one side representing Pikachu. Yes. So we have we have KC the Canisius captain playing against a little Taze St. Peter's. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Well, maybe there was a miscommunication. Yeah, yeah, all right. I mean Oh, it looks like they get to go. Uh, yeah, those, they're just going into it. I think maybe he just wasn't prepared. And yeah. it's okay. He only took like 5% damage. It's not going to spell the difference between the game winning or not. So let's jump into it, shall we? So, you know, game one, PS2. You're going to see this a lot for game one stages. A lot of players feel insanely comfortable going to this stage. It's a big open stage. The two platforms are not like overbearing at all. And people, it's just like a comfy stage. But it's going to give Pikachu an advantage of being able to just like quick attack across the stage and be, and has plenty of room to run away especially against someone that's slow like Ganondorf 
Yeah, I mean, and I think that's the bigger big thing, right? It is PS2 is a hunt Pokemon Stadium is 100% just the, the comfort stage of so many picks because you get to feel like your opponent, like you said, it's a big stadium. Not too. I can't think of the characters that get gifts in general. Pokemon Stadium. Yeah, I mean, just like people who normally get like uh, edge guarded off stage yeah. if their recovery isn't the greatest. So right here, you know, we're seeing uh, the Pikachu. Obviously wants to push the Ganon off stage, try to get like a, some sort of edge guard, but Ganon's doing a fantastic job of getting back onto the stage safe and sound every single time he gets knocked off. That is epic. Is it just off the stage wants to get that looking for the connection that he did see if the still taze on Ganon manage. Not get hit. Oh, good damage coming out the dash attack is gonna take the stop. Yeah, KC coming in. I mean, again, like every stock matters. So he's gonna, he doesn't care about extra credit as much. You know, you don't the, the, you screw the extra credit. You want to like double pass the class. You want to keep going, taking the stocks as far, far as possible because they matter. Fantastic tech coming out from KC. Gonna be able to get back onto the stage and uh, go kind of reset back to neutral a bit. And the thing is, if Casey doesn't get taken out soon, it takes a little bit of a hit because obviously, in kill percent for Ganon, easily, right? Pikachu at 100. Like, a tickle's going to kill, like, kill Pikachu. But if he manages to get a little bit higher and gain that rage, then it's, uh. Bro, it's spe like speaking of. <laughs> speaking of a tickle, all he had to do was just lightly tap Ganon. The second he was out of his double jumps, it was pretty much done, so. so Right now, uh, uh, like Casey's sitting pretty good right now. Three stocks to one. Let's see if he can try to take this final stock without dropping a single one. That would net him so many points. It's going to be three points right out the gate off of game one alone. Yeah, and then again, these points do start to add up in that round, right? That, that three stock might be the difference of one point uh, high up near the end, right? Mm -hmm. uh, every stock does really matter. It's going to be off by three stocks in game all. That was really smart of KC. What happened is he recognized the forward air was coming from Ganon, right? He knew he was going to play aggressive the second he got hit against. So he was just like, I'm just going to wait for it. Duck, actually physically duck the forward air, get the down tilt. That's going to be able to combo into a down air spike to end the first game. And again, three points coming in hot. I see. And where, where do you think Ganon takes Pikachu? Uh, uh, to the character select screen and pick a different character. No, so I, I honestly just probably a smaller stage. Definitely a smaller stage uh, allows him to be able to close the distance a little bit more against Pikachu. I would say something like Smashville could potentially be good, even though Pikachu gets a lot of advantage on that middle platform yeah. because it is relatively small. Um, and you can close the distance. Like I said, on PS2, not that it was really a big deal in that first game. Pikachu wasn't really running away that much. It wasn't like trying to play like a hit and run type of game. He was actually playing super aggressive. So uh, honestly, I, I, he could probably just go to any comfort stage that he'd want. But Battlefield would be another good stage because of like, you know, the up smash on the sword can easily just cleave through uh, a character trying to land on the platforms. For instance, if he gets them into a tech situation above them, yeah. They try to like type to the left or the right. That sword is so massive, it's going to cover every single option. Yeah, Battlefield probably. Uh, I mean, look, I'd love to see the meme. I haven't seen Yoshi's Island or Violet come out yet. You know, but, you know? Mm. but they're, uh, they're interesting stages. I have a, a few words on both of them. I feel like Ganon would not like Lilac no. Cruise that much. No. Like, I, I, just trying to get back to the stage just seems like disastrous. The bans are coming in. I'm seeing a Yoshi's Brawl and Smashville ended up getting banning. So yeah, that Smashville was actually a threat for KC. He recognized he didn't want that close quarters type of area. Yoshi's Brawl, you know, also kind of like very similar to Smashville in, time, in terms of that middle platform, except also with like little divots. Wow. Okay. So. I, oh, it looks like we, Final Destination doesn't want platforms at all. So, I mean, there is a benefit to going to FD, right? Uh, Pikachu does like platforms as well because, you know, quick attack cancels off of the platforms, being able to just go travel all over the place and be able to chase after his opponent, get a lot of up air combo damages off the triplats. So with the platforms completely erased, like he's not going to be able to get too much, too many combos. And also we got a character swap. We got a King K rule coming out from show. This makes so FD makes a bit more sense with King because you're looking so much at Pikachu's ability, and like you said, it can't dash the platform. 
then now he can kind of sit back and play the Zona game. And it's going to be interesting to see how KC reacts to that, right? We do know that he is a Pikachu man. He's playing Pikachu very long. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to see if he's, uh, if he's in a situation. I imagine he tried things like that. Yeah, I mean, you saw KC already adapted to the situation because, you know, King K. Rool, he, he's like a grappler from like a fighting game kind of where he, yeah. he wants to be right in the opponent's face the majority of the time. So out the gate, KC was playing from a distance, throwing out the projectiles until he finally gets a hit. Once he finally gets a hit, like what's happening right now, he is just dominating this uh, stage trapping. And then there's a lot of pressure going on right now. He's at 127%. He's having a little bit of trouble trying to find his way back down. And all it took was just a little bit of a roll. Get back center stage. Now he's got to try to find stage control. And it's an opportunity here from the players, but I really like how he's playing. He got a good cross up there uh, a little while ago and managed to catch him off guard. And now he looks like he's managed to get that momentum back and get off the stage. Like, and, and that's the thing. That, that ledge trapping, right? It's keeping them off the stage, making sure he doesn't get momentum. And so he, uh, he went for the the nasty, the McNasty with the downer. He was trying to get the spike against KC. Unfortunately, there's a lot of active hitbox, you know, that, that has a little bit of recovery on that downer. So uh, Sho wasn't able to get back to the stage in time. Fell to his death, unfortunately. But he was at pretty high percent, so at least that that's like some... So, uh, that's a little yeah, bit of consolation. Yeah, he plays sometimes, right? Because if you're going to get stalked, mm -hmm. you might as well go for something cheeky, try and pull something out and even it out, right? It's worst case scenario. Best case scenario. He he comboed that. You saw that? The thunder yeah. into the forder? Yeah. Um. Okay, he shows getting a little bit overzealous here with these down smashes. At this point, Casey's just playing a bait and punish game. He's just waiting for Show to just swing at him, whether it's like in the air or on the ground. Waits for the big punish and gets the forward smash. He manages to take one more stock without losing it. That's going to be, what, nine points off of this singular set? Um, or eight, yeah, points. No, like, eight points. Eight points. Uh, eight points. Eight points. I can math. You, you know what? Pass the math. Happen. Yeah. All right, there we go. Got the spot dodge. I, Jab's going to be able to beat out right through that. That looked like an incorrect uh, quick attack, but unfortunately, Sho just uh, buffered that down smash a little bit too soon. Yeah, but there okay. we go. So that, that is now not going to be the maximum point gain for Casey. Little Taze managing to find his first stock. And this is the opportunity, right? He's going to be able to get some momentum now. Kind of caught Casey off of guard, managed to find it. Good grab coming out there. Going to build up some percentage. Dude, was all he needed was just a singular stock? Is it's that it? Mental. Like It's it... the mental game. It's all mental. He pressed button to take the stock. I mean, King K. Roll definitely encourages the uh, pushing of buttons. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and, oh. That was incredibly clever coming out from KC. What he was doing, he was using the crown against the K. Roll himself. You know, he was Z-dropping it on the ground. So every single time that uh, Show was trying to get back onto the stage, like, he, he was stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, the, the crown would just knock him out of it. Eventually, he just died from it. So that's going to be another victory coming from KC. And that's going to add seven points to his team in that set. Yeah, and that's, that, that's a good start, right? That's one point off of the... And on top of that now, we are going to be moving on Kanishi's side, Joe A versus Gene. And the reason we specified also a Joe S. Oh. Like, uh, wait, on which school? On Kanisha's playing with Joe A. Oh, wait, gotcha. He is. Gene, okay, cool. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, there's a, like I said, in a crew battle, there, it, when it's 1v1, there's already a lot of mental games that happen within the sets, obviously. You know, if anyone that has played a competitive game at all, they would understand that. But I feel like it gets enhanced even further because it's you're no longer just playing for yourself. You're playing for a team, you know? It's, it's kind of like playing another, like, big team game like CSGO or Overwatch, where it's like if you don't want to be the weakest link. Yeah, and it, there's there's pressure onto you to perform well, so you don't let your teammates down. So your teammates don't, you know. Yeah. Get, you know, it, morale is very important, I guess. And you do feel a sense of pressure, right? When you have two losses, and now like you have to, if you do the math, you have to win the next two sets and like knock them like out of the. Like, that, that's a lot of pressure because you know the exact mm. target that you need to hit. And if you. All right, so it looks like we're going to be uh, waiting for our next two competitors to start yeah. doing the stage strikes. 
Uh, so you guys got it. I, I think it's really cute that you guys can flip like a virtual coin online to rather get heads or tails. I, I, I feel like if we were actually like at an event offline, like flipping a coin would be super satisfying for like a crew battle like type of deal. Yeah, yeah, you have each crew member come up and then like flip the coin and things. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, do it virtually. It works. We've got Gene who is under the AS5. And honestly, I'm, I'm hoping we see some... He, I do believe he played PG once, but I believe he's actually a NES player, if I do remember off the top of my head. It's been a few weeks since the last time we played. Week two was before Christmas. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Yeah, that was, that was a while ago. Like I said, it's a brand new year, so the whole new season's going to be coming in. So you say he's got Ness, he's got Pichu. Uh, we'll see what's coming in. Maybe you just like you know, representing, because like you know, I got that Shovel Knight icon, so I, I wish I could play the assist trophy in the game. But yeah, oh man, if Shovel Knight was a character <laughs> in the game, how much? Fun. I mean, you could go play like Rivals of Ether, Brawlhalla. Like they're he's in there. Like yeah, just, just copy paste the move set, put it in Smash, and bam, you're set. Yeah, hundred percent. He's going to be that fifth DLC character coming up this Thursday, right? Yeah, we do get news. Who, who are you thinking of? Who, uh... It's going to be a Battletoad. You think it's going to be a Battletoad? Just... Out of everything. No. Out of everything. So, like, I, I basically... I, I was a big uh, pusher for a Battletoad to get into Smash back before Banjo was announced. Okay. Because they just announced a brand new Battletoads game at that particular E3. Right, so yeah, I was that, like, you know what? It's it. Yeah, I'm calling like it. I love Battletoads. This game is godlike. I love it so much. It's so like it's a very dumb game based on how hard it is. So yeah. I was just I was a big advocate for that. And I, then when Banjo was announced, it dashed my dreams because you know it's a rare product and they're not gonna get two rare characters in you know. I mean, never know. It depends on the kind of deal. Yeah, I mean I, they got like twenty Capcom characters, so. Yeah, exactly. Right, like and anything's possible. Hmm. But, uh, I mean, I, I've got some theories. I mean, the, the, the big theory right now is it's going to be, like, Dante from Devil yeah, May Cry. That, that's that's what I've heard a lot. A lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, if, if, he, if he gets announced, I won't be surprised because they do have, like, Devil May Cry announcement on the same day. It could just be a coincidence. It could be a red herring. I'm not sure. Yeah. But... I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just be excited to get any character, honestly. As long as, as, long as it's a character that's, like... That deserves to be represented or doesn't get represented enough, you know? I, yeah. I would like that. Yeah. I mean, it would definitely be nice. Uh, but no, so yeah, Dante Dante seems like the safe bet, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you want if you want to be a weenie, you know, end up going for that one. Honestly, when I whenever I go into it, I I always just like go with like the the crazy character, you know? Like yeah, uh, like, like I said, Sora the battle toads because like no Sora. I mean, Sora is like a very in incredibly popular pick right now. A lot of people yeah. want to see in the I game. Mean, so I, it... It's um, it, there's not so many characters left to get announced that would make people lose their mind. You know? Yeah. Like. Like I remember, like I, th I I still think to this day the character that broke the internet the most was probably Cloud's announcement in Smash Four, and yeah. yeah, and before that it was probably Snake or Sonic in Brawl, um, probably Snake honestly because that was just like wait what, and he literally came out of nowhere. So it, once 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 Cloud was announced, it's like anyone can get into Smash. Like that that the barriers are broken because that was a character that people literally thought could never get in, right? Because like Cloud was never on a Nintendo system. It's gonna be Square. There's no way there's gonna they're gonna convince uh you know Square Enix to get their character into the game. And lo and behold, it happened, and no one thought it'd be Cloud. People thought it would be like you know like a Chocobo or like Fighter or Black Mage or something. Dude, if Vivi got into the game, I, I would have been all about it. I'm going to be honest with you. I think everybody would have been more hyped than Cloud. And I think I'm one of the very few people who would have been in no, that I mean, game. No, I mean, a lot of people like Vivi. He's a very popular character. I like him as well. But I think Cloud is the character that deserved to get in over anyone else from the Final Fantasy series because he's the most recognizable character. I mean, you I think this is important in Smash is, is, is getting like the most recognizable character from your series to represent you. Yeah, 100%. I mean, if, if somebody was to throw in some random character, right, and everybody's like, who is that? What game are they from? It's not, you're not really doing your series justice. 
Yeah, like you know when they announced, uh, like it, it was uh, completely deserved when they announced Piranha Plant, for instance. You know, from a uh, Piranha Plant series, the, the his yeah, favorite game. Yeah, no, I did. I love yeah. Pir- Piranha Plant's games. Fantastic. Yeah, so I, I'm really glad his series got represented. So we did still I, got these bands coming. Yeah, yeah, in. yeah I was just about um, to say. They're taking quite a while to go into this. So we got uh, the band Town, Smashville, and Battlefield. So that means we're going to leave us with uh, Final Destination. And uh, what's the fit? Kalos? Uh, Town and City. Oh, no. Town was banned, wasn't it? Uh, so mm-hmm. that leaves us... Pokemon with Stadium Final 2. Stadium, Pokemon Stadium 2. How did we both forget yeah. about Pokemon Stadium? It's like the obvious one. And yeah. that's the stage that we're actually going to be going to. For- oh, well, there we uh, go. Pokemon Stadium 2. I mean, I'm excited. I'm, I'm now we've got two new players coming on, but of course, there's still some pressure because Canisius are seven points ahead. Oh yeah, you know, like, there's there's a lot uh, on their plate to try to like make that back, right? Because you know, it's only game two of five or set two of five sets, so the, anything could happen in the future. I would, I like if there's a reverse three stock, you know, it could easily, easily, you know, like tie up the game or even take the lead. Well, I said he was a Ness main. Turns out he's a Lucas main. It's close enough after like three weeks. But Lucas against Robin. I like this matchup. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be the projectile war, essentially. Yeah, in the beginning, anyways, right? So Lucas also has the ability to be able to uh, absorb projectiles from their opponent. You know, you got Robin coming in here, throwing out, you know, anything from underneath the sun to throw at Lucas. And he can easily just, like, absorb a lot of it. But speaking of absorb... Robin can do it as well. You know, he's got notes for Ratu, able to just like do that as a command grab against Lucas. If if Lucas is just standing on the stage holding shield, Robin could easily land right on top of him, go for a down B, connect it into Lucas, and just start draining away. Yeah, and I think I think that's the, the big thing, right? I think people forget about Nosferatu coming out from Robin. It's one of those moves that you see get thrown out occasionally, but it's never something you're thinking of. That PK freeze was uh, was class. Every time I see a PK freeze come out from Lucas like that, like the trajectory that they fly in is so absurd. Yeah, well, I think that's the, I think that's a beneficial bit to the move, right? Because you never quite expect Oh, yeah. It. Yeah, you, you never see it coming out like that. And it, it, if you're playing your trump card that soon, you know, you can be a little bit careful. But here we go. We got the uh, arc fires coming in. The double arc fire into an up air lemon sword. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Going to be able to take that first stock. Yeah, and I think that's the other thing, right, is I feel like this is a battle of attrition when playing against Robin, especially in the kind of zony matchups, because you're waiting for Robin to use their resources as much as they can, right, and get them to a point where they need to kind of play defensively, and that's when you commit. But you've also got this weird scenario where if you're just letting Robin commit all of their resources, you're going to get hit. Yeah, it, it, it will happen eventually. Oh, look at this. The combos continue, you know, trying to kill off the top there. Arc fire from Robin, just such a fantastic combo starter because it's pretty safe as well if you do it from far enough but distance away. You got a smash tag coming in, be able to send away that second stock. Yeah, and again, five points on Gene. Down two stocks. I mean, this is looking great for Joe. Yeah, I mean, Joe, three stocks up to one. It's, it's doing good for his school as well. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like they're already in the lead from game number one. Things are looking a little bit bleak here for St. Peter's right so, out the gate. Yeah, St. Peter's want to be able to find at least one stock off of this. This is an opportunity open for Gene, but decides to back away, kind of go back into that zone game. Okay, can he's just running back here? 103% on Robin. Literally at this point, like Gene just wants to get that stock. He just wants to get in there, get a back throw. Speaking of, oh, wasn't able to get the kill because a little bit too far away on the big stage. He just goes for the, the Thoron as a way to just get him off of him to immediately delete the disadvantage state. Yeah, and I mean, look, sometimes you just got to throw the Thoron out, hope that it connects, right? There, that was a good PK fire there. Managing to fish it out, finally finding that stock. Don't see PK fire kill too often, but when it does, it's pretty sick. But there's an up smash coming out. At least he was able to take away one of those stocks, so it's only going to be two points going to Canisius. Yeah, give Canisius nine points. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be game number one as we go into this. Now we got a counter pick coming out. Gene can easily, if if assuming they're both staying as the same characters, there's not much that Gene could do in terms of counter pick in this situation because they're both kind of similar characters and what stages they like. So it's going to be more of like a comfort pick, in my opinion, for Gene anyways. Maybe have a smaller stage, you know, like something like Smashville, something like Yoshi's Brawl. 
try to like close that distance a little bit. I uh, I like the yeah I like the idea of a smaller stage right that makes sense. Lets him get mm. in a bit more you know do Lucasy things or maybe we see a character switch because if I also do recall Gene switched to Toon Link last week or yeah last time we played. So there is a there is a possibility Toon Link into Robin might actually be slightly more beneficial with some bomb play. If he ends up going for Toon Link, you know, I could see Battlefield coming out, Triplats. Well, Yoshi's some, or maybe Island just... and Battlefield were banned by Canisius. Okay. So that's going to leave, you know, and by the way, uh, when they ban stages, that's before characters are picked. So uh, they're, they're just going off the knowledge of what they think is going to happen. Because what happens is now player two, uh, Gene, can pick a stage. And after he picks that stage, then player one picks a character, and then player two picks a character after that. Yeah, they're double so, blind. it's double blind on the mm -hmm. character select as well. So yeah, it could literally be anybody. Nobody has to stay as the same character. And I think, again, that adds to another element, right? There's a lot of, like, mind by games and micro decisions being made by these teams that can play out positively or negatively. Yeah, it could definitely, like, lead into something. Along those lines, we got our characters swapping, coming out, stage picks. I could see him sticking with the Lucas. I could also foresee him switching over to a different character, like Toon Link, like you said. Toon Link would be a very good character for him to be able to just throw out boomerangs and arrows against the opponent to try to distract them a little bit more because those projectiles are a little bit longer reach than Lucas's. Looks like we got Kalos coming out. So you got those two platforms on both sides of the stage that, that kind of like chill outside the stage could easily help with like recovering or as well as like trying to use that. Like if you're playing Toon Link, for instance, you could easily chill on those platforms, throw out those bombs and, you know, just start throwing everything but the kitchen sink at your opponent. Sometimes just throwing the kitchen sink at them is exactly what you want. That's, I mean, that's a link strategy right there. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You just throw everything at them and hope that you find the stock. That B button becomes your best friend. It really, Sonic. Oh, Sonic. <laughs> Both yeah, of us surprised. Can... Yeah. Well, so that that now I see why we opted to go to Kalos. Now, Sonic likes big stages. Uh, he like uh, I'm shocked we didn't see Final Destination, but Kalos is just as good with this type of stage. Cal uh, Sonic gets the advantage of being able to do like a spin jump off of the platforms to try to catch a high recovery from Robin if he's finding himself that high in the air. So he goes even further towards the, closer to the blast zone with the assistance of that. Plus it lets him, it gives him another option to be able to try to recover off of it. Yeah. Sonic has not been like in his prime since Smash 4, obviously. It's a kind of different play style this, this time around. I see a lot more Sonic's play aggressive in Ultimate compared to Smash 4. And I think it's because of like the nerfs to his defensive options. Yeah, and I think I think those options were I think those defensive uh, nerfs were definitely warranted. Oh, and this is starting off to be really good. Now this is something very troubling for Robin, right? So anytime he tries to recover with the arc win, he's completely vulnerable above. Now we have Sonic the freest homing attack of all time. Yeah, and I mean that that is Sonic's BMD, right? Like that homing attack. Oh, that was nice. Okay, going for the homing attack once again. Looking for a good like connection. He like charged the forward smash and he had the right idea, just a little bit too close to the stage. Like I, I'm telling you, man, when a Sonic charges their smash, their forward smash against the opponent, I call it the hypno smash because you're hypnotizing your opponent with the way he like swings his hand. So you, you can't help but get hit. You can't help but get hit by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I... Oh, oh, okay, right there, trying to go for the homing attack, the safer option, ended up whiffing it, so wasn't able to get a big punish. Right. And I, 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 oddly enough, I think this might be a matchup that Gene, or uh, yeah, five points here, Gene understands, right? Because you don't just pick Sonic randomly into something like Robin. Uh, yeah, I mean, just being able to, like, force, like, aggression against Robin, like he's doing currently. Like, it, Robin struggles whenever someone's, like, constantly on them and you can't breathe. Like, when Robin in a disadvantage state is not the greatest. No. But Robin wants to just be able to do whatever Robin wants to do, right? Like, the, give Robin three threes it and take advantage of it but like you said right that homing attack completely negates i was recovering oh my goodness that was you know the, what i mean good read the reach on that levin sword he saw him go over the homing attack just gonna throw it out there he obviously wanted to use that as like an anti or didn't expect him to charge the homing attack i think he was just expecting him to go with an aggressive option but still got the kill anyways and just shows you the reach right that the levy sword has yeah, it's very important to see like how far in the air it goes. Like he like he throws that nonsense. Yeah. Oh, big punish coming out. Forward smash pushes him back off. Oh, he's out of resources. Hold on, he's out of the arc fire. He's out of the arc win. This is gonna be a terrible spot for him. If Gene can try to just get him off stage. I 
actually be Jean's opportunity. And again, I'm so, I really, really like seeing this sort of thing because it also I can't think it's a pick that Joe is used to playing against. You don't see many Sonic. <laughs> it's a character that a lot of people uh, sleep on. You don't yeah, see as much anymore. Yeah. He's a pocket pick, right? You use him in scenarios where your main wouldn't work, and you you're kind of praying that they're not match up and to take advantage of that as much as you can. Well, fighting against Sonic is not uh, is very unlike fighting other characters, right? Yes. There's a lot of uh, a lot of nuances that go into it. You can't get away with just pushing buttons against Sonic because he's really good at punishing. Punish. The, the, yeah. He punishes like the smallest little thing because of his fast speed. He's the fastest character in the game. There we go. Good bait. Managed to run towards the center of the stage. Waits for the aggressive option and connects the fist from the forward smash. And finally, finally, we have a point on the board coming from St. Peter's. Two points, in fact. Yeah, two points. It, of course, the Gene managed to. Oh, that brings it to 1 1 as well. So, this going into the third game, this could be anywhere from five to three points for either of the wins. Now, uh, Canisius obviously still will have the lead no matter what after this game, but this is an opportunity for St. Peter's to try to like close that gap a little further. Yeah. I mean, this, well, this is what St. Peter's, right? They want to be able to get mm -hmm. this now, win this next one. If they throw. Then they're only like what two points down? No, they're. I think they're tied. Uh, no, because they're at nine. They'd get five points off of this. That oh, they're seven. at nine. Yeah, because right, Kanisha right. took that first game. Joe beat Gene game one with two stocks. Well, I'm just gonna bust out my calculator here real quick on my right. uh, cast a math. Cast got it. Uh, yeah. So I need a calculator in order to do addition. Um. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're good. Well, I'm good now. I'm good now. I got yeah, my yeah, you got it. You got it. Okay. I got okay. my. I got my TI eighty four gray version. Run the Silver num edition? Run, run the numbers. Yeah. Say, yeah, make sure we checked them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it, the story checks out. Yoshi's three banned. Speaking of stories. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just uh, honestly, I that could just be like a personal pick. Like they just don't want to go there, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I could see why, because Yoshi's story is like, is very similar to Battlefield, just a little bigger, with, but they also have slants on the edge. Do we see a switch off of the Robin to try and micro-play the song? In my mind, uh, a lot of players tend to play multiple characters, and why not? You know, there's 79 characters, soon to be 80. I understand why people would want to play more than just one. Yeah, absolutely. But, but the thing is, I, I think players need to believe in the character a little more. Um, there's a, there, I feel like a lot of players out there, even high-level players, will go into a set, lose game one, and switch characters instead of switching mentality or switching play style or switching like how they approach the situation, try to learn from it. Yeah. Instead of trying to learn from game one, they switch they characters switch. and all of a sudden it's like a brand new game. So it, it, it can, it, you sometimes kind of shoot yourself in the foot in terms of like growing as a player that way. But sometimes it also works because there are some pretty bad matchups out there. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a crutch, right? I mean, I'm sure you've heard the wife's tale that children learn faster with that mm. there, there is there is a point to this. yes right yeah, yeah recently that's been completely on in reason for it because adults have more crutches they could, they could use google they could do that they're not thrusted into sink or swim learning the language right where a kid has to and i think it's that same mentality right where you have the option of switching your character and trying to play on a better matchup instead of sinking or swimming, that matchup to catch people off no, nah, man, I'm at my prime. I can't learn another language. Oh, like, it's okay, over. Well, yeah, yeah, uh, it's completely right, done. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I can only okay, do okay. that when I was only when I was like five or something. Only I don't when know. you were five? Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, it's impo it's literally impossible. The, the internet really told impo me. And the internet the told internet me. Internet told so. you. And wives' yeah. tales are wild. <laughs> I actually did believe that though before he told me this. So oh, yeah, did you? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. You learned... Hey, to be honest, I, I believed uh... it for a very long time because I grew up. I was only learning Spanish. so... Uh, because I was a child, but no, it was because I was thrown into a school as an English child uh, whilst living in Spain with uh, no no way to talk to anybody. Oh yeah, I mean that'll do it too. Yeah, when yeah, you're, yeah. Like, Forced into a situation, it's 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 it becomes like a do or die situation. Yeah. Okay, we got our uh, picks coming out. It looks like we're going to Yoshi's story. Hmm. 
Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication. I think he asked for the. They picked the stage before the bands came out, but they ban they they weren't gonna ban it anyway, so it doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah, but but if they were gonna go anyway. Yeah. So yeah. it looks like your story might be the pick again. This would be a real if he sticks with the Robin, pretty good stage uh, allows him to just be able to just like gives him some breathing room away from the Sonic in the middle because with. Oh, especially with the way he was using homing attack, the platforms could easily disrupt that, right? He could go yeah. for a homing attack, and if, the, like, Robin's on the ground, it will just hit the platform sometimes. So, yeah. also, yeah. it gives him the ability to be able to zone out the opponent a little bit easier. If he's got a platform above him, it makes aerial approaches. Yeah. Okay, uh, going to battlefield again. Oh, same thing, but the same, the same, yeah, uh, yeah, same idea. Same, same idea, same idea. Um, yeah. So if you're chilling underneath the platform, you know, like it's hard for the opponent to go for aerial approaches against you because there is that platform that you can easily hide underneath. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, the, the platforms are an interesting spot. That being able to hide underneath things does that get you away? From In? Yeah, we don't we'll have switch. to wait and see. So jumping into game number three here. Uh, again, we got Gene versus Joe. Dunning up. St. Peter's. And yep. Joe. And I so, yeah. want to see how this goes. One, I hope I've won. Go, the Gene had a character switch. Okay, so it's Peter's version. Do we see Joe uh, adapt yeah, and get his team? Yeah. Regardless, a lot of points are on the line here. I mean, you see the five points, he manages to win this. Look at that. He, he, if he if he three stocks him, he gets five points. He's he's called five points. He's after the five points. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. about it. The little fiver. Oh, the homing tech managed to find his way through. That was very close. It almost hit the cop platform. But this is exactly what I was saying was going to happen, right? You see Robin, you see Joe just chilling on the edge of the stage, charging up his projectiles, using the platform as like a safety crutch. Because goes for a point blank Thorin. Thoron and just sends him flying off stage. Knows exactly where he's going, runs right into a trap, gets the smash attack, and is going to take away that first stock. And I think this is the difference, like we were saying, right? Didn't see a character switch. Kind of figured out how Gene is playing Sonic. Changed the stage, the environment around him. He's, he's uh, yeah, using that to his advantage. Ow. Okay. Homing attack, a very good option for trying to catch uh, tech options. Oh, the down air that could have set up for something. That, that, that was smart, right? He wanted to run back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, wanted, he just wanted to go for like a charge on an arc fire instead of trying to like go for a follow up, want to go for the safer option. F smash a little bit too slow on that. You easily get the shield out. So you, you definitely see Joe here giving Dean respect, right? He's going for those safer options. Like you said, he's not going for anything risky because he. Him. Yeah, he's just easily waiting at this point. He's waiting for Sonic to commit to something right there. That, like, that was the correct option. Bun all the way to the right side and came to the left, giving him proper ample amount of time to be able to get a huge punish against him. And now there's definitely adaptation coming into play. I'm glad he didn't opt to go for a switch of the characters. Back air, good stuff. Coming out from Gene, managed to just go out there, connect it, take away the stock, refuses to give him the three stock, and easily, you can't be thinking of just the stocks at this point. Like You, you could easily bring this back and win the set. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think I think that might be an opportunity. I mean, you're at 82%. You're, you're not in the greatest position. You're smart, like he is doing right now. The edge guard is fantastic. Yeah, that was a really bad spot for him to be in. He gave him so much breathing room. I, I was shocked that he ran so far. Okay, runs in there, gets, getting a dash attack, waits for the landing. He's trying to cover. He doesn't want to get too close to his shield in case he wants to go for like a punish out of it. He was hoping that he was gonna like just move forward a bit. Yeah. Oh, he went for the up smash. Very cheeky. Being a little bit too obvious. He's fishing for it at this point. You know, he, like the up smash will not even kill at that percent. So he just he, he's just trying to like get that extra hit. Sees the Thoron coming. Try to try to throw another projectile. Throws the dash attack through it to be able to just catch the book mid attack. Okay, trying to bait it out as well, though, down hill, and again, Gene is playing it. Oh, no, the homing attack, this could be exactly what Joe was needing, gets the air dash, hits the uh, How did his down smash, smash come out? Yeah. It came out so quick. I, it's Sonic, man. You're too slow. Yeah, 100%. Oh, gonna avoid that. that uh, we're seeing a lot of, like, back rolls. 
Coming out from Joe. Oh, he tried to go to the oh. platform. Could not avoid the swing of the sword. Gets caught. Nicked on the head. That's going to be an even further lead for Canisius. Yeah, Canisius there. I mean, sometimes that's how it happens, right? Two stocks gets two more points. Puts them up to 13 against St. Peter's 2 at the moment. So this is an 11-point differential. Yeah, that's going to be one heck of a hill to climb. Let me tell you what. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, it's definitely not impossible to climb back from, though, right? Because we're only mm. two games in. We're going into game three now. If if there's a massive comeback here, we could see eight points being made, and then they'd have a three-point differential. They can bring it back. But this, this yeah. game, you know, yeah. And what's crazy is that Gene was starting to bring back that game three. There was that time when uh, Joe was starting to, like, any time that Joe threw out an attack or threw out an aggressive option, he would roll back. And he did that a lot. And, you know, you saw Gene start to catch up onto that, which is why he kept throwing out dash attack. Dash attack being like a safe option in that regard because it's not like a commitment if they end up going for a different defensive option, but it caught him every yeah. single time. So, like, the adaptation was coming, and I felt like he had the advantage. Like, he had momentum, but just did not expect to get caught by that smash attack when he was trying to just dip through the platform, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think... I think ironically there sonic was uh wasn't fast enough on dropping through yeah. the platform which uh you know you hate to see it happen you hate to see the fastest hedgehog alive get a uh, be too slow oh man Sweet it, jokes. It, yeah never never a good feeling to no. whenever this stuff happens so no. but you know a fantastic lead coming out for Canisius. Uh, we'll see how they're going to go into this next set coming up again. Guys, if you're now just tuning in, we're watching five different sets happening today. Each set containing a best two of three games with points being awarded for how many stocks you have left over. Yeah. And at the moment, again, if you haven't been turning in, it, the current scoreline is 13 points to two points. Canisius College in a rather large lead. Yeah, it, again, it, it is doable based on the they send out. But that, as time keeps going on, it's just going to get more and more difficult. Yeah, and we are seeing the first band coming out, Battlefield from St. Peter's. Do so, we know uh, which player is going to be coming out to join us for set number three? Uh, coming out into set number three, we have, I believe off of the top of my head, a Zero Ace for St. Peter's playing against Canisius is Andrew. Gotcha. So Zero Ace versus Andrew. Coming yeah. I already see Zero Ace in the lobby. Oh, got there we little, go. Uh, got a Fire Emblem oh, token. I'm, I don't I'm know checking our, uh, our stat sheets, trying to, trying to see the history of these players. Ooh. You got, the, you got them stats? I, I got them stat sheets. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I know. So I don't actually think St. Peter's were manning Zero Ace the last time they played. Oh, so this double will be a first. Yeah, I'm just double checking here. Yeah, no, Zero Ace is not on the sheet. So this is a substitute, uh, which should be interesting. And for Canisius, I also don't think Andrew has played. Uh, oh, no, Andrew has played. Uh, Andrew won uh, playing against Flubber from Niagara University uh, last week. And uh, yeah, they went zero. They lost the first round and then one stocked and three stocked the final round, getting them the total win. So it, it could be interesting here. So there's a win under one of their belts and a player that actually hasn't played in one of the weeks yet. And we're going to be going to Pokemon Stadium 2 once again. I don't think anybody's surprised. Yeah, uh, I think honestly at this point, we're just going to be seeing that happen like pretty much every set for the rest of tonight so let's jump into it. we got two sword wielders coming out you got shulk versus link yeah i mean this is an interesting one right swordy versus swordy is already interesting when it's like two of fire emblem characters but when you add links projectiles and the monados coming out from shulk like there's there is some interesting decisions yeah and if they just go for like the pure sword and like try to like, just arrange each other like shulk has the advantage Right, because Shulk's sword is ginormous. It, it, it's almost to... like it extends. Yeah, it's like it's like a second. Sh he's swinging a second Shulk at you, yeah. and uh, he's trying to like if he just goes for the spacing game, which a lot of Shulks will end up doing, 
it, they can easily just try to like outzone their opponents in that regard. And meanwhile, you have Link over here who does ask more than just the sword. You know, he's got a bag of tools right underneath there. He's got a bow and arrow. He's got a bomb, boomerang, whatever you want to like throw out there and try to like just stay away from your opponent. If he tries to zone out a little bit too much, you know. And another yeah. thing the Shulk's going to be able to have is the Smash Metal Art and just Metal Arts in general. So Smash Art is going to be able to kill at an absurdly low percent to start off that first stock. Wow. Yeah, and, and I think that just shows the power of the Monado, right? And the Monado Arts mm. is that they they really, really can kill, like you said, at ludicrously low split percent. It's a zero, oh. though, the accident OSD. I hate to see it happen. Yeah, St. Peter's off to not the greatest start here. Zero Ace has to pull something out of his sleeve to try to like bring this back. You can't get you can't get discouraged by something like that. Forward smash. I mean, if that would have connected, I'm not sure if it would have killed or not, but respect the option. Using the the shield on there, trying to, trying to reduce some damage in case you get caught up. Laying on the ground, kind of baiting his opposition to try and play out the smash attack. Looking for the roll, didn't quite find it though. Okay, getting so much damage off of these nares off the Buster Mato Art. When you have the Buster Art on, that's gonna be able to increase your damage. 40%, so tons of damage coming out. Gets a forward smash as a punish for the other forward smash coming out. And now Zero Ace finds himself in a bad spot. Back throw, offstage, 136. Jump art's gonna give him so much air control. But, oh no, he's trying to go for it. He tried to go for a tech. You saw that air dodge come out. Unfortunately, ended up killing him. Well, that's that's a stock, right? So if you're Zero Ace at the moment, you had an unfortunate SD, but you managed to take a stock off. You didn't give your opposition the maximum amount of points that they could have gotten. Uh, very quick game one. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it didn't help at all that the uh, always had the SD in that yes, second no, stock. It never helps. It's yeah. very unfortunate. Like I said, you hate to see when that happens. We're going to jump into this next one. Now, Shulk is a character near and dear to my heart. Uh, he was the character that I played in Smash 4 when he was not that good and now when he's coming into ultimates he's a way way better character from them because his arts are very similar to the hyper monado arts which was a custom skill in smash 4 they activate yeah no problem uh it's just that these arts are just um they're very quick they come out they come out they keep they come out very quick right so the um if the arts come out, uh, they can last for like 11 seconds or something. Uh, something is su super quick compared to like what they're used to in the previous game. So you can easily just swap between the arts as much as you want. To try to like fit the situation. And the Shieldman art even has a different utility altogether. If you opt to go for the shield art mid combo, you can easily just break that combo right then and there. Just try to like get out of like a, any sort of combo damage and I'll maybe even get a punish for it. So if you're used to like getting like a true combo against any character in the game, it does not yeah. work on Shulk. Like, Shulk can get out of that easily. Yeah, and I guess, I guess that's the other big thing, right? Is, like, I... Shulk's one of those interesting characters where if you know how to play against him, he has, like, some clear flaws that you need to, like... That you, it's, again, it, and I feel like this is for a lot of matchups, though. You have to have specific character knowledge, right? You've obviously got your bread and butters that work on most things, but like you said, not all of them are going to work on Shulk like they work on everybody else. Mm. Yeah, he's just... He, he's a... He's also got a little bit of bag of tricks with that sword there. I mean, he's technically got six four, five in Otterwards, and then yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Anything, anything could happen. Uh, Shulk, I, I, I sensed a zero ace might be a little bit flustered after that previous uh, game. Uh, you know, getting that early SD in stock number two is never a good feeling. Yeah, no, it's 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 never a great time when that happens. But being able to retort and finding a stock as well and kind of diminishing the amount of points they got is important. Mm. But now, looking at the picks and bans, it looks like St. Peter's might be banning Battlefield. They seem to be umming ah and ahhing over it at the moment. And again, where where do you take Shulk? I mean, as Link, like the, you want to take him to probably like just a bigger stage. Yeah. Uh, with Link, you you have projectiles to work. With, right? You have uh, the abilities to be able to run the edge of the stages and just try to like throw everything at your opponents. But Shulk isn't too deterred by projectiles. He has multitude of ways to be able to try to like close the gap. Whether it's a speed run out of art or jump run out of art, like just something that just increases his, his mobility, he could e easily dance around the, the type of projectiles that Link's going to be able to throw out. Yeah, I, I think that that is the correct. I think you do have to play it as a sorting matchup, don't you? 
Mm-hmm. So that, that that's where it like comes into play. Is yeah. again when Shulk's got the bigger sword, it could become way easier to like be able to zone out your opponent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some sometimes sorting matchups do just come to disjointed hitboxes, right? And and trying to trying to poke and jab them out. Okay, so it looks like uh, we're trying to figure out the stage bands still here. Might have some a little bit of issues going on, but that's okay. Going to be able to get into that the game number two here. Yeah, I assume. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious where they end up going. I I do think a bigger stage is the right way to go, but like, do do you go for? So there's so many decisions and like little things because do you think platforms are a massive factor in this matchup? Uh, no, not really. Like, like she does have the up tilts on the platforms if the opponent tries to like down on top of him. Yeah. Uh, but Link can do the same stuff. It's just he has a smaller sword. So there, there's like I said, I, I think Link's just probably just going to a bigger stage. Like Final Destination, Kalos Pokemon League, I see something like that coming out from Link. But uh, you know, they're taking their sweet time uh, picking the stage. Yeah, they they they're definitely they're definitely trying to, <laughs> trying to figure this out. You know, we're trying to figure out what they might pick, and they're they're going. Yeah. What what do we? Bro, pick? listen, I can only talk about the counter pick stage for so long. Until, all right, like, all right. Yeah. Well, give, give, me, give, me, give me give me all right then, Austin. Let, let's have let's have an Osti fair, right? What's your favorite stage? Just overall, where do you like to go? My favorite stage? I, yeah. I don't know. Like, but anything that's not a slant. Like, I, I I'm a big believer of just having like five stages. And then okay. that's all you need, like just the five starter stages, and then maybe six if you want Kalos and Town and City. Yeah. But yeah, the four starters, Kalos, Town and City. I feel like those are the only stages you ever need, and I feel comfortable on all six of those stages. That's right. The other cool. stages, the other stages make me a little mad, uh, because of the slants. Like I, I'm not a big fan of slants. It changes up I, the game a little bit. Are you telling me you don't like playing against like DDDs when there's slants around? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Uh, that sounds awful. <laughs> but uh <laughs> no i was just talking about how like you know it changes up like what you do right so like if you're on the edge of the stage for instance as crom for instance if you're yeah. on the edge of battlefield on crom trying to get a ledge trap you just stand at the same spot you normally would on pretty much any other stage and you try to like space out where you're gonna get that jab or when you're gonna go for a trump or whatever but yeah. if you try to do that on a stage like yoshi's island or like that cruise where there's that slight edge, um, you have to like change up where exactly you're going. The ledge trapping becomes slightly different in that regards. So what's the same on literally every other stage becomes completely different based on the slants. So it can change up a lot based on the game, especially in a game like this where all the stages, like the neutral stages are all pretty well balanced in my opinion. Yeah. Piranha Plan. We see a character switch coming out from St. Peter's here. Zero Waste bringing out the Piranha Plant. You know, you were talking about how much you love the Piranha Plant series earlier, Rusty, so you finally yeah. get to see him. Yeah, I, I prefer not to, but you know how it is. So we got <laughs> we got Piranha Plant coming out. One of the first DLC character. Now, I, I was a big... I, my theory is that he wasn't really supposed to be DLC, but they just kind of ran out of time. So yeah. that's why he was given to well, us didn't take for a slot, free. did he? No, he didn't take a slot at the season pass, and he was free as long as you bought the game and, got, and downloaded the code before February. So, yeah. but still, technically, the first DLC character to come out caught a lot of people by surprise because this character is just goofy. I mean, look at him. He's going to be throwing out a him. lot of these. I, I genuinely love him. I, no, I adore him, too. He, he, he's pretty funny. Uh, able to use his he, They give him little booties as he dashes through the stage. Yeah, yeah, which that. nice touch. You know, Nintendo always great at their little touches there. And I think this might have actually seen be the first Piranha Plant we've seen throughout the entire like Invitational. Yeah, I uh, can't say I've I, honestly I don't I never see them at all. So it, yeah, always a, always a, always a plenty one. So again, Shulk's game plan probably not gonna change too much here. Oh, there might, might be some matchup unfamiliarity going on. Yeah, as I well, like. It, I like what Zero is doing here. I mean, okay, we just saw the stock being taken there, but. By uh, I believe Andrew, but Zero Ace is kind of using Piranha Plant's like extensions, right, and his leads to poke him out and then zoning him with the fog, which is doing a good job of building percent. But how do you get in on a Shulk to actually kill? Yeah, it, 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 it's tough because you got to go be able to like go in between the sword 
and try to like outspace him and play a little bit more aggressive against him because even though he's got a big sword those attacks come out pretty slow in comparison to other ones like his nair comes out at like frame 14 or something crazy so it, it takes a while for that swing to come out seeing the forward airs so you're gonna have to like respect it a little bit more but we're seeing a lot of poison breath coming out from zero ace Again, if you manage to catch him with the Poison Breath, it does a ton of damage against the opponent. It also clouds up to make it, it allows Brompan to play a little bit sneaky because you can charge an attack that they're not expecting. Yeah. You can bait things as well, right? Because you can make somebody think if you don't move, you just stay in the, the Poison Clouds. You can kind of just chill, bait somebody out, and then go for a grab or something if they think you're committing. Yeah, I mean, he baited out that up, up, up B, let me tell you what. Managed to get the kill. But uh, 174% now, seeing kind of a, a remix here of game two. He's struggling to try to get this stock. He's going to stay on that shield, but not a ward. It's going to be just proved to be even more fatal beyond that. 200%, man. Yeah. Ooh, there Up it is. Throw finally does it. Takes the stock. So it's not going to be a clean sweep. Uh, more poison breath coming out here. Shulk just running in there in between the clouds. Gets a combo. Because he was in Buster Art, the down throw into forward smash was able to connect because Buster Art actually lowers the amount of knockdown that you get against your opponent. You got look, the, uh, it's almost like you really like Shulk. No, I just know the character. Yeah, no, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, that's, yeah, for, that's, for, that's something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he just did it. He honestly Again. just threw that out. He was like, I'm gonna catch you, you're gonna go for neutral getup. Because when you're when you're going for ledge traps like that, it yeah. becomes a situation of are they just using neutral getup like all the time? Are they using the same option all the time? Or is it becoming a situation where like they're becoming predictable with the timing of when they're coming up? Because regardless, he was able to pick up on that and he scored them four points plus a bonus two for that set, putting them even further into the lead. Yeah, now at nineteen points. And how how much I'm I'm trying to do the math here. Is it possible for St. Peter's to come back? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Leave all me right, in suspense. Right, okay, so okay, tell I'll me be, it's I'll, not possible. All right, all right. I'll, you know what? I'll never tell you the odds. I believe. You believe? I. You know what? I want to believe as well. I. I there think. No, it, it. No, it is a hundred percent possible for them to come back. Just got three stock, everyone. Let's go. Unless I'm casting mathing it. No, I'm not doing that. I, I don't, know. I, don't I, know. I am not putting the... I'm not crunching the numbers. I, right, I don't right. care. You know what? I'm not going right. to double check my math. Bet. Okay, so we got a... I'm wrong. We got the fourth game coming in here. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure. Like, St. Peter's morale must be insanely low, honestly. Well, we have Dante playing against Sho, and Sho is the St. Peter's team captain. So hopefully we should be seeing mm. something coming out here. And if I also remember off the top of my head, they are a Lucina main. Ooh. So, so it's Lucina, more sorting action. Yeah, I mean, I, I love me some good sorties, let me tell you what. Um, so with with Lucina, you know, she's got a lot of stuff that she can work with, right? She's considered one of the best Fire Emblem characters out there. Yeah. Uh, in, in Ultimate because she's just so balanced. She does pretty much anything that Krom can do, but then also get back, have an insane recovery to get back on stage compared to any other sword user. If you're, if you're not counting Jumping Out of Art, like if Shulk's out of Jumping Out of Art, you know. But uh, Dolphin Slash is just such a quick option, has an aggressive option on top of it whenever you try to go for that platform. You can easily push the opponent who's like standing on the stage slightly away. Um, on top of that, you know, she's got pretty good air mobility. She's not a fast faller like Krom or Roy, but she's a little bit more floaty, but that gives her more control. It allows her to be able to just try to like space out the opponent and play like how... How a Marth would play, right? Because if you play Marth, like your entire goal is to keep your opponent at arm's length because you want to land that tipper. You the the if you hit them at the edge, it encourages Marth encourages you to play space well because you yeah. want to get that tipper hit. But the same thing applies to Lucina in terms of wanting to space well. You, granted, you don't get the tipper hit anymore because no matter where you hit on that sword, it's going to be the same amount of damage, same amount of knockback. But you still have a big sword, and you should play around that. I, I definitely sense Show would be able to do that. You'd hope, you'd hope so with somebody who's played so much Lucina and things. And that's the thing. Mm. I think I think it'd be interesting. I think Marth does, like you said, the tipper hit's really important and teaches, especially newer players, once they kind of get the idea, like good spacing is really, really important. And I think that's something that people just starting to get into the game and things like that maybe don't consider as much, especially if they're new to fighting games. Because I think Smash is a good good gateway into the FGC in general. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. So you know, and I think I think footsies and spacings and everything like that is super duper important and kind of universal. Well, it, it, well, a lot of people can get turned off by fighting games if they've never played them before. Yeah, absolutely. Fighting games because they're they're very intimidating. If you've never done before. Jump in. Just the, there's so much happening and you don't quite understand what's going on. Whereas Smash is a perfect gateway because it it starts off as a casual friendly game. Yeah. Like, you know, everyone has played Smash Brothers, you know. Unless like, you have uh, a like big brother. Almost... Yeah. <laughs> have a casual and friendly if you have a big brother. Yeah, can't help with that one. <laughs> but like, you know, they just play Smash Bros. They play eight player Smash items on, etc. But it's yeah. not gonna be Lucina coming out. It's gonna be her um oh like it, it's it's old enough, right? I can just say it. I can just I, say who I, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can just say it. It's her father. Oh, the Crom coming out. Spoilers. Fire Emblem Awakening himself. Okay, like I think I think Nintendo spoiled that in Smash Four. I I, I got I like, was playing through three houses and it got spoiled for me mid run and I've not been able to pick that game up since and I'm so upset. Oh no! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, no, that's too recent. That's too recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was it, it was an intentional spoiler. I'm still salty. But anyway, going on to this, we have Show, the team captain for Saint Peter's, playing against Dante on the Zelda. And taking a look over the statue, we have seen Dante play before off the top of my head because I remember his Zelda very, very specifically. And if I also do recall, I believe he took his game. But I may be wrong on that, actually. Double checking the match history here. I can't see him. Maybe Canisius has two uh, Zelda players. Well, you know what? You're able to get that first stock by dominating with that down tilt. I don't know if you saw that, but he, uh, he just has deed. Um, yeah, was... So he was just trying to get, he was trying to get onto the ledge, but uh, uh, show you know has a great start. You know, being the T captain might be one. He gets caught immediately by the forward smash. Yeah, now reset, right? We're stock reset. It's two two. <laughs> like now we get to see once again a bit of more of a start up. Hey, this matchup's interesting, right? Because if Zelda can kind of keep away and like get her knight to poke and things, then she should be able to pull away. But as soon as Prom gets in, it's gonna hurt. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a very, like, one-sided match in terms of who gets wins the neutral. Yeah. Because if, if, if Krom wins neutral, he can combo damage for days against Zelda, because both these characters' disadvantage states are not the greatest, especially Krom. Like, if, if Dante gets Sho off stage, then if he plays his cards right, like, Sho should not get back, no matter what percent he's at. Yeah, because Krom yeah. can easily get this uh, character. Meanwhile, you know, Zelda, Zelda, not as much pressure off stage, but just trying to like get away from like combos. Like the second like Krom goes like starts swinging on him, starts like throwing their, their face at the A button. Like that's going to be kind of devastating. Yeah, There's I mean, the jab off. Oh. oh, there you go. Okay, good cross up, setting up the knight here, looking to gimp it. Does get the ledge though, doesn't quite time it. It was unfortunate because he landed the jab. Oh, gets caught by the Phantom Knight. Gonna be able to take the second stock. Sho landed the game, the stock taking jab, but just did not get the reverse aerial rush back air in time. It's like that's like the bread and butter from Crom's. Yeah, it's, it's some good BMB, but it's interesting. I do believe we've seen Sho play Crom when backed into a corner. So it's interesting to see when Lucina isn't working. So it's interesting to see Sho instantly go to Crom. Maybe not liking the Zelda matchup on Lucina at all. It could be, but I want to talk about that forward air that he just did. That was super dangerous, and but it managed to work in his favor. Very risky day through try to take that stock because if, if he would have whipped that forward air, he would have been done for. Oh, you covered a little bit too low. The up be not able to connect onto the ledge, and that's gonna be game one going to Dante, putting one point, another point towards uh, Canisius. Well, yeah, and that's gonna put them up to 20. Points. That is a massive point lead. That is an 18 point difference. Now, you, I, did you math out the max amount of points a team could potentially get? Uh, I believe I did, although it might have been incorrect because it was off of the top of my head and caster math is a real thing. Oh, okay. Uh, you, yeah, I, I remember you said like can, 55 or something. I can, yeah, I think 55. I think I was running that somehow to a best of three each time. But uh, I, could, I could run the numbers. It's eight times five. It's 40. Oh, there you go. Look, look at, look, got, at, look at. I got you. Wow, look at you. Look at that. I, I definitely yeah. don't have my T eighty four silver <laughs> with extra apps that with allows me to program my. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever have like one of those fancy calculators in school when you were like a kid? Um, I'm trying to think because most of my most of my schooling was in Spain. Oh, uh, yeah. So that is yeah. probably different. So it's yeah, and I mean even English in English school is very very different to American school.
Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so like... Uh, but no, I'm pretty sure we did. I don't remember it having extra apps. That sounds extra fancy. So, like, when I say apps, uh, it was a different time. We, they weren't called apps. So what no. you could do on this calculator, in, in my schools, in my middle school and high school, they had calculators that you could borrow. Yeah. And they were, they were very fancy because you could make programs inside okay. of them. And, like, you could put, like, you know, it, it was, like, baby's first coding, you know? So, okay. like, I, I, remember, I remember messing around with that when I was a kid and uh, did a lot of coding within there. But the best thing you could do is if there was like if you're taking like a math test and they let you use your calculator but yeah. you're not allowed to like you can't bring notes like they said no notes oh, but you can no. have a calculator okay i'd put my notes in the calculator like what oh, no. <laughs> come on like what were they thinking i mean that seems like a massive oversight but it's yeah. not something i would condone i'm sorry mrs jane uh, yeah. i cheated on a 10th grade test on uh, in calculus or whatever <sighs> it was tut, tut. i'm so sorry like, you can just take give me the f just give me the f Take away my, my graduation. Take away your graduation. Yep, yeah, it never happened. Take away all my degrees. They're <laughs> yeah, gone. There you go. Poof, all gone. Oh dear. Dude, degrees. That is uh you know. What uh what do you study, Osti? Acting. Acting. Can you imagine? Dude, I mean, I can understand. Fake it till you make it, right? Wow. Okay, first <laughs> off. <laughs> No, but like, you know, acting was uh, something that kind of like led me toward jumping into like casting. So, yeah, you know, I, co I combined the two things I love, video games and bada bing, this is what comes out. And it's, it's really cool to see just like how uh, people can pursue their passions into form of esports or gaming now. You know, like it, it yeah. was such a not, a not not that big of a thing when I was way younger. I mean, so at it's a high school league, uh, the EGFH. They get a scholarship to UConn. I would have if, loved that. You know, if yeah. So and that's that's super cool, right? Because I think me and you are both in the same around the same age group, where it's like when we were a bit younger, that never existed, and that opportunity that would have been so cool. Bro, that didn't exist like five years ago. Like no, one, exactly, maybe even two exactly. years. Ago. Like it, it's so new. Like it's but it's such a cool concept for the. Uh, the younger generation out there to be able to have these opportunities. So yeah. And it, and it lets people, it lets you see the younger talent and maybe get their eyes on them, right? If you're talent scout or headhunting for players and things like that. As mm. an orc, you get, you get your eyes on them. You kind of you figure it out. You watch how they progress. And then you never know. Like, you might be landing yourself a career by winning something like that. And you don't even know it. But we're going to go yep. to Kalos. Okay. So this is an interesting pick. Uh, unless he opts to switch. I mean, even if he switches characters to Lucina, like, very interesting is actually a pretty good stage for zelda um yes. it, it doesn't give her the advantage of being able to hide underneath the platform anymore but like it, uh, what zelda can do on this stage is set up phantom knights on the bottom part of the stage while trying to catch them to recover up higher yeah we do have the switch coming out opting to go for lucina probably just to have that little bit of extra oomph of survivability yeah and but I, I think um that yeah makes sense so now we're going to jump into the game and we'll see how Kalos is going to work out for show. Like there's a lot on the line here. Like he's got to take this game if they want to stand a chance of taking the set. Because if he doesn't win this, like, I don't know. Like, I don't think set five will affect too much. Yeah, since now they have mathematically half of the maximum points that they could obtain. Yeah, uh... I need to see a double three stock right now. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely, I think we need to see three stocks throughout. Or St. Peter's. Mm. And even then, I think there might be one point or two points down. Still gonna get those games in just to, just to make sure we have all the players play. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's the important thing, right? Because at the end of the day, this is pre-eliminations. This is for seeding for the event. And so all of this is kind of building up towards the regular season that will be coming later this year. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so it's more fun getting used to it, right? It's not super duper important because again, it's pre-elims. Oh no, another SD. That was incredibly unfortunate because Show was actually winning. You saw Show like he he self destructed at like five or ten percent, but super low. There you go. Man managed managed to find the punish though. Committed to it. Got the stop. Now back at zero percent. Very re uh, reminiscent of game one. Yeah. No harm. No foul. We're gonna jump in here. You see Zelda kind of just jumping around that platform. Dante trying to find their way back towards the uh, center stage. 
Now we're seeing we're seeing the sword play coming out pretty nicely from Show. Uh, they, they're doing a pretty good job of just trying to wall out their opponent with the sword, playing trying to play safe. Forward smash, another option that like is pretty safe for Lucina because the cooldown on it's not the longest, especially as like a ledge trapping tool. Yeah. And he's going he's going for big reads with that. You see that? Oh, good spot dodge. Be able to get away from that up B that Zelda throws out. Is being made the option selects here, right? What you can just go. Oh, you commit to it off of the stage. Okay, try and get the ledge. Oh, looking for the trump potentially. Might find it, but managed to get the punish straight after. Again, now we do see Dante put onto that edge and quickly rotated around the phantom like coming out, catches him out with the neutral air. Forward air managed to just swing at him, get the stock. You saw him just kind of dripped out there. Now shows one stock away from taking him home this game. See if we try to pull it off. Look out for that Phantom Knight who's put in a bad position, right? Because Zelda's got the Din's Fire, has the Phantom Knight, has a lot to work with it. I love the spacing on that. He actually backed up with the Nair to put himself in such a position where the Forward Smash would easily come out and uh, connect that stock. You know, this game is unbelievably close, right? Because as soon as one of them got the stock, the other ones managed to come around and even out, and they've both been 0 0 at the start of each stock. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, anything can go in this, like, last stock here, 65 to 8. Show doing a fantastic job of just walling out Dante, just not giving him no for Yeah, Kano's just definitely to back a on good stage, stage pick. Mm -hmm. I think hey, that should be highlighted. Show got a little bit overzealous right there. You saw him jump right in there. Smash coming out. Dancing Blade is actually a pretty smart option, but, you know, spot dodge is... Like, because he was too close, wasn't able to get caught by the uh, next couple of swings. Good Very spot dodge. Oh, misses the grab though, just slightly out of range. I got the spot dodge, retaliating to the aggressive option. Pop, pops him up with the Nair one, but couldn't get the Nair two to the land. Now, Lucina landing the first swing of Nair could easily land into something way, way bigger because it puts him in such a position where like a smash stack could come out, a backer, whatever they'd like. Oh no, but Dante got a grab. This could be devastating. Hold on a second. Oh. Very good spot dodge again the spot dodges at the moment like I, I i know that it's casual practice but online spot dodges are definitely a bit more riskier i would say and uh they, they are they are making good reads yeah i mean a lot of the things that were introduced in old the spot dodge can cancel yeah. your spot dodge into an attack which is a very like popular option for these players yeah i mean it's it's, it's definitely a good option as well but there is going to be the connection and show is gonna be able to take the set for St. Peter's, right? Yep. Uh, I, th th that's the game. That's game two. That, that, uh, oh, was that? I've completely just blanked. Uh, that was game two, wasn't it? Yes, so now we're on yeah. game three, game the three. final game. Unfortunately, that only gave them a point, though, because the only stock left over. For some reason, my brain there was like, oh, yeah, shows one twice. But no, no, you're 100% correct. I mean, it was kind of close because that, that, I mean, that first stock was, uh, was, it, it, it was because he fell off, right? He has to yeah. eat in game number one. He has to eat in game number two. Hopefully he's got it out of his system for this and uh, try to like, uh, get this game three going. Oh, but yeah, so now we're going once again into the pick ban phase and now it is in Canisius' uh, court of where they want to go so it's it's an interesting one where does zelda take lucina slash crom um nothing small like you you like honestly like kalos would be a stage that i thought would be good for zelda um if not kalos maybe something like i i could see battlefield being kind of good the problem is the sword user sorties love battlefield sorties love triplats it's always going to be helpful in that regard but Zelda can do a lot, you know, just chilling underneath the platforms, trying to like bait, using the platforms as like a defense option to try to zone out their opponent. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe go if they want to go for Krom or even to kind of mess with Lucina's recovery sometimes, is Cruz like Cruise could kind of mess around with that. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think, and again, highlighting it, you thought that uh, Kalos would have been a Zelda stage, but actually, I think that just goes to show again shows understanding of lucina right and kind of kind of reading it out maybe hoping that zelda would take a bit more of a kind of reactive situation because it was kalos instead of being so proactive and it, it benefited uh show there
but we are seeing show ban Lila and Smashville after we saw Kanisha's ban Yoshi's Brawl. So now coming out, it should be interesting to see where they end up picking. I think Austin's completely correct there. Going going for that, going for that larger stage. Yeah, I I was actually uh, shocked to see them banning Smashville because that, that would actually be a fantastic stage for uh, Lucino or Chrome. But you know, yeah. it could just be player pressure. Yeah, I mean, like like you said, it's the whole Kalos thing again. But I wouldn't be surprised if we end up maybe on Talon City. Talon City could be a really popular choice as well. Uh, Krom tend to like that stage, though, because they can get some absurd combos using up airs. But I, I think Show's probably going to stick with the loose, you know? Yeah, I think, I think mentally here, right, you know you know that they've... Oh, they're going to go Battlefield. Okay, keeping it, keeping it nice and standard. Yeah, like I said, with Battlefield, uh, this this is not a surprise for me. I thought want to like chill underneath the platforms, throw out projectiles against the opponent. Even though sorties like triplats, zoners also like triplats, so it could go either way. Almost like everybody likes triplats. Maybe yeah, I mean, yeah, even it's kind of eh. it, it's hard to hard count, to get like a really hard hard counter pick in this yeah, game absolutely. because most a lot of characters like a lot of the stages. It's not as defining as it was in Smash 4. No. I think I think I think most of the changes from Smash 4 to Ultimate were positive changes. Mm. I think it was healthier for the game. Yeah. No, 100%. Okay. So right there, we got the uh, neutral B trying to go for the shield breaker against uh it, it, it's a good like option as a ledge trap option. Oh, hold on. The double jumps out. Ooh. Right oh, a little okay. bit too far away. I, I, what he was trying to go for was he was hoping Pharaoh's win would land right in front of him so the counter would like hit him. But unfortunately, uh, like didn't expect him to go that high because a forward smash would have easily caught him. Yeah, and that and that would have worked out extremely beneficially for Show, right? Hitting that counter on like Sephora's win there would have, uh, mm -hmm. would have been would have been very beneficial. Would have knocked him straight back off of the stage and forced him into that disadvantage. But there's going to be stock one going towards show. 66%. I like that little walk away too coming out from show. You know, he just waits for uh, Dante to just push a button. Or throw out an attack. He just jumps up. Gets this clean back air. Yeah, it, that first yeah. It, it's that mental game, right? Of baiting it out and being like, look, you don't want to press buttons. Because you're going to get hit for pressing buttons. Oh, he's out of jumps again. Hold on. Okay. It was too close to the ledge. It wasn't too much that show could have done in that situation. So... Dante just trying to get back to the stage and recover your resources. That's the name of the game. If you're, if you're off stage without a jump, you're putting in a terrible spot. He chose that down smash for a year. Uh, yeah. I'm actually a little bit surprised that that worked. But, I mean, show's definitely happy, right? Three stocks still. We do see Dante on one stock. So this could be a five-point game for St. Peter's. And this could be a uh, start of something beautiful. Show yeah. try to get this three stock. I mean, he's still at 129%. Literally, Dante just needs this stock. So, this is the show to try to hold on to it. Okay, again, forward air to eat out the double jump. Oh, good recovery from Dante. Mixed him up. He mixed me up, too. I, th I was looking at the edge. Yeah, well, and it out. just crossed him up. And now Show is on the back burner here, put into that disadvantaged state. Oh, okay, back to neutral. Okay, dash attack, throws it out again. Phantom Knight coming out. Now, Show, you know, coming in there, landing down with these dancing blades. He, he's got a lot of momentum in his favor. Yeah. Got him on the ledge trap, potential. Going for down tilt to play it safe. That's one of Lucina's safest attacks in the game. Yeah, Lucina's oh, down tilt. Unbelievably good. All right, going for the tempo disadvantage. There, there we go. Managing to find a stop. That was unfortunate for Show because he jumped off to get try to get a counter on the Feyor's win, but it was a little bit too slow. And because he went for it, he put himself in a disadvantage state to get back onto the stage, which Dante took made sure to take away the stock. Yeah, no, and that that was that was the right punish, right? That was the right option select for Dante there to get away, <laughs> managed to reduce the point. Even if they lose now, it's not a massive like loss in any sense. But uh. I'm in out here. I would. I, I think it would be absolutely amazing if Dante managed to find a recovery in this state. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it, it could be tough, right? When you're 
Yeah. But you see Show trying to mix up where he was going to land with the Dancing Blade. Okay. Going for the neutral B. Holding down with the Phantom Knight coming out. Trying to make him sure that they go for that downward swing. And there in the center stage. The show could maybe end this. Try to get a little bit too overzealous with the Nair. Again, diving off stage. Trying to give up stage control. Waits for the roll. Gets the forward smash. And show putting the first set win for St. Peter's on the board. Netting his school. Like, I don't know how many points that was. points. They netted him total six points. So, show uh, quadrupled. St. Peter's had. I mean, you gotta be team captain for something, right? Yeah, I mean, you managed to win your set now, and now we're gonna be going into set five. I think, well, I, I think now we are, we are all fully aware that Canisius are gonna win overall. It however, is possible. However, the seeding is decided on series wins and losses total, but then also point differential. So this next set will be played out in point differential, which may benefit them if they manage to earn a few points now. Ah, okay. So, yeah, so the points matter no matter what. Yes, yeah, so the points no matter no matter what because if you're tied with a series, so let's say you have two series wins and one series loss or whatever, and it comes down to we'd look at point differential to decide who's first and who's second seed in that situation. So if we could see a massive like like another eight points come out into St. Peter's, that could be huge for them when we actually go into the final seeding decisions. I gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I I could honestly. See um it's it's good to have something like that because you you never want to see a player playing a set and then like there's no point to it so they throw right yeah so absolutely. it's good it's good to know that points always always matter yeah it's important right because it it makes it beneficial and makes it wise for everybody it's 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 no fun playing a set that's completely irrelevant Oh, going to be moving on, like we said, to game number five, which is going to be Joe S playing against Ricardo. I, uh, I'm interested to see because, again, looking over both of these schools prior, Ricardo was not in the list either. So I believe these are two new players. Ah, oh. so Unless Joe S is changes. on. Joe S Joe, is on Canisius. Uh, Joe S is on Canisius playing against. Ricardo from St. Peter's. Gotcha. He's got a Terry token. Are we going to see some uh, Terry action King of Fighters? You, you know what? I'd, I'd love to see some Terry action. We haven't seen any tonight. What do you think of Terry overall, Austin? Uh, he's he's cool. I, yeah. I, I think he's, he's a really character that was in, um, cool to have like another fighting game presented that's not just the basic Shoto. Because, you know, yeah. like, Ryu and Ken are some of the most basic characters in fighting games. Like, the, they're, like, the characters you use to, like, learn the game and then move on to someone else. Or unless you, like, really like them. So, yeah. to see another character come into the game that's from a different series to represent a different type of fighting game, which is King of Fighters, uh, it's really cool to see something like that. Yeah, I, you know, when, when King of Fighters was rumored... I personally, Terry makes a hundred percent sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he he is that series mascot. But he doesn't man, just he represent King of Fighters. He represents Fatal Fury. He, yeah, that, that's the game he's originally from. Yeah, yeah. So he, he's got a representation of two different games. You know, and that's that's a that's a good thing to have. For both as a company, a new company that is entering the Smash world, right? Because they want mm. they want to get their games done, and obviously we saw King of Fighters uh, get announced. The new King of Fighters, I believe, King of Fighters fourteen. Yeah, uh, 15? fifteen. Fourteen. I I, I actually forgot the number. Yeah, but yeah, it's coming out soon. Uh, because the latest King of Fighters didn't take off as much as they wanted it to. It was a really fun fighting game as well. I I, yeah. I had quite a bit of enjoyment with that, but yeah, SNK are definitely uh definitely happy. It is King of Fighters 15, by the way. I was double checking yeah, the yeah. facts there. Thought 14. That, that's what wrong. I thought. I I thought it was 15 because like 14 was like the. Yeah. And that was released like in 2016, 2017 or something. Uh yeah yeah it wasn't that long ago but no I you know personally real big fan of Cooler. Uh but you know may, maybe one day if we get Cooler in Smash I would be ecstatic. It, I, the odds of that like isn't isn't she already in it like as a character is she stage? a spirit no, no no i think she appears like on the stage like in the background 
I've, King of I've not played on I've not played on the King of Fight stage that much. Bro, that stage is awesome. You gotta yeah. try it. It's right, it's right. um it, if you play it with like hazards on, it's like you, you like combo them against the wall. It's actually really funny. Okay. Uh they they're, they're jo- Battlefield, by the way, game one. Mm, Battlefield. It was a it was a joke which I'm on the community. Where like people wanted to, like the new tournament standard to be uh, King of Fighters only, and then you just That's... play on that stage. Yeah, I mean if it's if it's that good of a stage, I mean I don't think everybody would be happy about that, but uh, it's uh it's funny. That's why people are yeah. like, it, yeah. oh my god, these combos are ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so we got Joker and Mario coming out. So once more, we got Joe S playing as Joker for Canisius and Ricardo representing Mario at St. Peter's. So, uh, so we, we see a, you know, I, I joke about it a lot and I feel like it, there's a few people that joke about it, how Joker isn't a full character until our send comes out, but like, Joker's got some moves. Yeah, he, he's, uh, debated to be like one of the best characters in the game. Yeah. Uh, almost, almost single-handedly d- decided by MKLeo, the best player in the game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think he's argued, I think, I, th- I think I'd put him in top five as just Joker and then the best character of our send. Oh, there you go. I mean, yeah, Arsene gives him a huge boon. So, like, right now, Joe out it. You know, he just waits for that meter to get charged, a little pink meter there. Once he takes enough damage or enough time passes by, Arsene comes out, and then the damage starts to rock. And he has that form for 30 seconds unless he takes hits. The timer only going down if he manages to take damage in the middle of it. So, some characters like to, like, try to play away from it, try to run away from the character. Other people want to just, like, try to just do as much damage as possible to try to, like, negate the meter as much as they can. So we'll see what the strategy is coming out for Ricardo. Yeah, and like you said, right, when, when Arsene comes out, his moveset gets powered up. And he also gets a different recovery and down special, which uh, yeah. also plays it up a little bit, you know, having suddenly your downbeat instead of just being reduced damage, being into a counter can definitely catch some people out. And that counter reflects a lot of damage. Like, it hurts. It's the, probably the best counter in the game. Like, yeah. the range on it is enormous. Like, it's the only counter in the game Rom cannot avoid. Like, like if they're trying to catch the ledge, like they'll always catch it. So it's just it's just a big circle around Joker. So you got to be able to respect it. You know, I got Ricardo playing as Mario, very basic character, like the Shoto of Smash. You know? Yeah, he, yeah, he definitely. He's he's fundamental as the character, right? Like like mm-hmm. Ryu or Ken or any Shoto character in Street Fighter, he is just fundamental. If you're good with Mario, you should have a good understanding of Smash in general. Yeah. So Ricardo managed to catch that up Smash. A good anti-air option went out from it. Now, it's going to be up to Ricardo to try to, like, see him, like, crossing up uh, Joe a lot here. See him uh, trying to catch him off guard with where he's going to go for, like, a shield grab. He's going to go, oh, I like these stuff at the double jump. Joker has a really good recovery with the tether, though. I, I was, some people even say that the recovery is better without Arsene because the tether is so nice. I think I could agree with that. I think there's certain situations where Arsene's really nice, but the tether is just a top-notch recovery either way. <laughs> It's really fast. It can catch the it, like. It's really hard to edge guard him when he's got that out there because you saw there was an opportunity for Ricardo to try to like uh, uh, push the advantage to him off stage when he ate the double jump. But Joker just has that tool to get back on. Arsene's about to fall and out. There it is. Now Ricardo can continue to do damage and Ricardo has the lead. Oh, oh no! He ate the double jump and fast fell. I think he was trying to. Was he not sure what was going on? Spike. Joker? The thing is. I mean, he spiked forward air, so that's another thing. So I'm not yeah. sure what was going on. So unfortunately for him, Ricardo's lead is now deleted. So he can easily closes out. All he's got to do is just try to like roll behind him, connect the grab. Ledge trapping is going to be the name of the game because it's hard to like go out there and try to chase after Joker because he yeah, instantly it's not got stage. It. It's not because he can just get on the stage and just like turn the tables. Yeah, and, and also especially with Mario, right? Mario's recovery not the greatest in the world. Let's be honest. Like it gets some vertical height, but it's it's outclassed by so many recoveries. Where if you whiff, like we saw earlier, and then you whiff the recovery timing, like you, you just lose a stock. And now our sends out here, so hopefully it doesn't head stock a little bit too early here. Here goes back here. There it was. Catch him looking out of his shield. Gets the stock and our sin is completely deleted once the stock's gone. Yeah, which which is another important factor, right? Because if you can, they just get our send, then you instantly stop them. Like our send's gone. It's a great time. Okay, hey, landing out the backer. Big damage coming out. I like these juggles. I mean, this is what Mario wants, right? Mario gets the grab. He gets so much damage. Well, yeah, Mario wants platforms as well, right? Because you can land oh straight off. Oh no, God. the shield stutter. That's gonna be it. He broke it. 
He did? He, he just did it. The th like, yeah. the reason that happened was because he got the first swing against the shield. So the shield was already kind of hurting. And then he just went for the down smash because the, what, what was going through uh, Joe's mind, I think, was he went for the down smash because he recognized that the shield was small. So yeah. his goal was probably to poke him. He probably wanted to poke him with a low sweep because you can't block it with the when your shields like diminish that much. So you just want to hit him with the down smash, but it's still connected with the shield. Didn't get the poke and in the process broke the shield. So it made it an even better situation for himself. Yeah. And it, it definitely worked out from that. Didn't it? I, I felt Ricardo had like the lead the whole time too. It felt like he had momentum. Yeah, he definitely did. I think, I think all of that momentum was lost though when he accidentally SD'd. The SD plus the shield break, just not good for Ricardo. No, you know, because a shield break pretty much should guarantee you losing a stock. If your opposition doesn't take a stock off of you, or at least do some, like, heavy percentage, then, uh, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Oof, but no, okay. yeah, Ricardo losing that one. Now is once again going to fall into St. Peter's hands. For their first band and then the pick so i'm uh i'm curious where again he was showing some absolutely fantastic mario fundamentals by the way i know like we highlighted it earlier about how you know you know mario you know smash and he was pulling off some really nice things so, yeah uh, uh, yeah it, it's it's really strong to have stuff like that uh, uh, for your fundamentals with mario he yeah. I, I mean it just showed that ricardo both situations that turn the tides against him just like hopefully doesn't let that affect him too hard. Yeah, but just checking on what the teams are up to now. I'm uh Yeah, again, I don't know what stage you take them to. Do you just kind of keep it on you you want triplats with Mario, right, in this matchup? It feels like you want triplats. Uh yeah, Mario likes triplats. A lot of characters yeah. like triplats. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna it allows him to be able to. Cool. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's just a really good option to be able to just like throw out there and just be able to like continue raising the damage bit by bit. So we're still waiting on our next stage coming up. All right, yeah, there we go. Now, yeah, I think removing this. So now we have the thing is, it's in Ricardo's like point to pick the stage now, right? So St. Peter's going to ban a stage. Then, so looks like they're, they're kind of omen and orange again over Smashville or Callus. I think I'd rather ban Callus over Smashville. Okay, they're going Smashville on the ban. And now we're going to see Canisius pick their two bans. Who do, where do you really not want to go against with Mario? Do you think also? I think there's not a stage. Neutral, it does no, no, yeah. Like... He's, he's such a neutral <laughs> fundamental character that like it doesn't matter where you take him because again, and it's just good game design, right? Having your your mainstay be the character that like is the one to teach people. Yeah, like uh, I mean, you know, if Mario gets any platforms, he's able to get carry a lot of combo damage easily hit them off the ground and carry them in the air if you go to like final destination or town and city like same deal uh yeah just like literally they, they just pick a stage like and then yeah th like no matter no matter where they go like it, i think the same result's gonna happen i think ricardo will be able to get this game too though I, I i feel strongly that ricardo can bring this back because of the unfortunate circumstances that f befell him in game one yeah, it, it was unfortunate. That SD really, really hurt him because he was yeah. he did have such a massive lead at that time. And it was it wasn't even that. Like I mean that that was also a big one, but like the shield break itself, like I'm sure he wasn't expecting that. I don't think anyone was. I don't <laughs> no. I, I don't think I don't think Joker expected it, to be honest. I don't think Joe was like, Oh, cool, sick. And then he got the break. So it was just it was it was two back to back situations when Ricardo had so much control. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and that's you know <laughs> We said it before, we say it again, you really do genuinely hate to see it happen, right? Especially when it's like, I know shield breaking isn't RNG based because it is 
all like a statistic and number and you need to be paying attention to it. But like you said, I don't think anybody expected it at all. And, uh, but, but maybe we're wrong. Maybe Joe was completely aware of Ricardo's shield percentage at that point and like was completely aiming for that. And if so, I mean, Giga Brain play. Going to Final Destination. I, uh, yeah, Final Destination seems interesting. Remove Mario's triplats, remove Mario's platforms in general. Do we see a character switch? I don't think so. I, th I think it'd be really silly too. Point. Like, like I said, Ricardo was winning. It was just he, like, the unfortunate circumstances. I could say that again and again until this game finally starts, yeah. but there we go. Okay, he's switching to yeah, Captain Falcon for some reason. Well, there, there we go. See, I was, I, I had one of those scenes where it was like, do we see Joker switch off because he knows that Ricardo was in such a good advantage? Or is Final Destination, was it the platforms? Because Ricardo was making great use of those platforms. Was it that that caused him to go Falcon? I'm not sure, man. Like, I, I, I feel like Falcon, it, I, I mean, switching characters when I felt like you were doing good with the first character, it might just be a stage thing. Cause like, okay, we're going to FD. I can go for the surprise counter pick, yeah. which is another strategy people can pull out, right? Cause FD is not necessarily a bad stage for Mario, but Mario way benefits way more from platforms, but so does Falcon. Falcon likes uh, platforms as well, but he also benefits from big open stages like FD because it gives him so much room to be able to run around. He's already kind of just, just, just slobber knocking him right now. He's already got a 78% as he hasn't taken any damage. Got the shield break against him, gets him a Falcon punch and no damage against Ricardo. If that's not a turn around, I don't know what the hell is. Yeah, I mean, that's a massive speed, right? Already take the stock, you've got 10% on you. You can get those combos coming out now. FD's a great stage for Falcon. Yeah. It, like I said, it, it gives him plenty of room to be able to run around. Yeah. So now he's just kind of waiting for opportunity to get against Joker. Back here to come out. He was trying to catch the landing, but then didn't expect the uh, bullets to be able to come out while he's like shooting towards the ground. Ooh, the there double spike a yeah, I mean, he's going yeah. for double jumps. He's, uh, he's showing off, right? He's like, look, I'm, I'm good on Mario. I can, I can play Falcon too. Ah, he held it. He had the right idea. So like when, okay, he's laying down, whatever. So when, Re when Captain Falcon charges a down smash like that, he's trying to cover multiple options. He can cover neutral get up, the spacing of it, can cover get up attack, and get up roll. Okay, oh who God. cares? <laughs> Almost got him with the up tilts. Oh Who my the goodness. heck Karen's wrong trying to say right now? 83% trying to get back here, runs up, gets the jab, pushes him off. This is very destructive. Finally just going for a last ditch effort with that counter and just get the pressure off of him. Joe struggling here. Forward smash, not enough to get the stock. Just yet Ricardo trying to get that one more point. He saw the double jump. That was really smart oh, okay. because he got the footstool right afterwards, runs off stage, gets the back here, gets the three stock. That's gonna be three points. Going towards St. Peter's. I mean, I don't think there's much to say there other than Ricardo just played that beautifully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ricardo just, uh, he went to town with that. He, he got yeah. three stocks with Captain Falcon alone. I mean, that's the advantage of going for a counter pick uh, with a character is it can, your player, your opponent now has to adapt. And the game was actually shorter than the time it took to actually start the game. Yeah, no, absolutely. So hopefully, hopefully, Pick and Man's here a little bit faster. But uh, oh, that was that was unbelievably quick. Congratulations to Ricardo though for that three stock. That that was that was spicy. Okay, we got some counter picks coming out, waiting for their bands. This is the final game of the sets. We're going on an hour two of this, my hour three. We're at hour two is starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hour two has uh, we have been we know we've been live specifically for an hour forty four minutes. Mm -hmm. But uh yeah, so curious now. Here we go. We do see uh Canisius College's team captain typing it out now, so let's see where they end up banning. So we got another stage coming up. I see him sticking with Falcon, obviously. Uh, Captain Falcon being a pretty good character that has worked out for him. Wonderful in that game number two. You saw him just kind of styling, styling on Joe. It's like those spikes with like the up tilt, the down airs, etc. 
Yeah. All right, here she is, a bro being banned by Canisius. Yeah, all right. Thing about Smashville and Town being banned by St. Peter's. So again, now I'm curious though. Does Ricardo go Falcon again, or does he go back to Mario? Does he try and like double bait it, like play the mind games? Because it's double blind, so they don't know until they're like literally about to start. I think. Uh... I think that's definitely a curious decision to be making here. But uh, yeah, I hope everybody watching is having a good time. We do actually have two more sets after this, if people aren't aware. We've got RIT playing against Niagara Esports, and then Canisius playing against RIT. And uh, honestly, I'm, I'm looking forward to those games as well. We're, uh, we're running a little behind schedule. But hopefully we should be A-O-K. -okay. Pick that up. Uh, and again, this is the last set. The scoreline at the moment is Canisius with 21 points to St. Peter's 11 points. So the set is one to Canisius, but leading can go down to point differential. So that will mean that these last few games played out here. And Ricardo putting in the work and gaining some points for his team is absolutely so important. But... It looks like we are going to be getting into the game very, very shortly now, Osti, as they're going to go to Yoshi's Melee. Nice. So this is going to be uh, Yoshi's Story, the melee ver variation. So we got the triplats, just like Battlefield. Um, so it's going to be the same, just got a little bit bigger type of stage, and then also has the slants on the edge. I foresee him sticking with the Joker, since it was working for him a little bit in Game 1, but no, you have to... The they won't even try to deal with that. Wants to go for a quick character like Pichu in order to try to catch up with the Captain Falcon. So having a speed character for speed character, I, I can see why you'd want to do that. Yeah. This is, this is actually... It's interesting to me that uh, Canisius has a Pikachu player and a Pichu player. I, uh, I'd love to see the, the in-house scrims. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always a fun matchup to see. And oh my goodness! Ricardo! Oh. Yeah, that, that just kind of got erased. Immediately, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, so that's kind of the silliness that can happen with yeah, slants. Stage with slants, like you allowed to be able to connect that and just even up the stocks immediately. The two stocks apiece. But yeah, I mean that was so unbelievably quick. You blink and you missed it, right? They were both on three stocks and then they were on two stocks. Like that was unbelievably fast. We do see it work being put in at the moment, though. I love Peach as a character. It's such an interesting concept of like taking damage and hurting yourself a little bit, but being slightly faster uh, than your counterpart and slightly smaller. You're trying to land out the knee, just goes for the rapid jab to push him off. Is that is what's gonna happen on the stage with the benefit of for Pichu is that quick attack gives him so many opportunities on where he can mix land yeah. advantage. He could land on the bat the platforms, whether it's the right side or the top, he can go for the stage. It's pretty much the world's his oyster. And there, okay, okay, Ricardo though, coming coming back into action, trying to earn a few more points for his school. Make sure that they make up in point differential what they may not have made in this series. And again, this is Ricardo. I think he is playing against Joe S from Canisius. Canisius playing that Pichu. Ooh. This really could be anybody's game, right? With how these talks have been going. Ricardo here might be able to find something, though. Damage, good damage coming in again with that neutral air gets the connection. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, the side coming out. Again, that dash attack. Really putting in the work, being able to really, really safe recovery. And oh, that's going to be tough. And that's going to be Ricardo, Ricardo taking it. Three more points for his team due to taking the set with one stop left. Bringing St. Peter's at the end here. The final scoreline will be Nisha's College at 21 points with St. Peter's at 14. So congratulations to Canisius for taking the series in victory, ladies and gentlemen. And we will be hopping in a quick break as we switch over 
the RIT playing against Niagara. I hope everybody will tune around and watch the, uh, the other schools play, and we'll be back with you momentarily.